Alrighty, welcome, welcome here today with something a little different. As you might see in front of me, we're looking at a bit of a different ship for today. This is the USS Black, the Tier 9 reward ship. Formerly a ranked season reward and now available in the armory for steel. With the upcoming coupon, I've confirmed that I'm going to have enough steel for both the Burgoon and the Black, so just went ahead and got myself the Black. Sorry about that, just going to turn down the music volume a little bit. So, USS Black, what are we looking at here? So she's a Fletcher class destroyer, just like the Tech 9 Tech Tree Premium. Five turrets, 127 millimeters, two in the front, three in the back, and two quint tubes in the center line. Oh, okay, that's not good. Let's click back. Let's go back. So we go to her modules here. She has a standard repair party, or damage control party rather, and smokescreen, but she also has the option for surveillance radar in her slot three. So this is the destroyer radar of a detection range of 7.5 kilometers and an action time of 22 seconds. You can of course improve the action time by 20%, bringing it up to just about 26-27 seconds with the surveillance radar module. I don't currently have a spare one, so we're going to have to do without it for the time being. And there's three charges. In addition, if you really decided not to run surveillance radar, you can run the standard Fletcher consumables. So you can choose between defensive fire, destroyer defensive fire that is. 200% or speed boost, but obviously the main draw to black is her radar. It has an action time of 7.5 kilometers, as I mentioned, and given her consumement of 5.8 kilometers detection range, it means basically if you ever get spotted by another destroyer, you just press the button and they get revealed. So this makes her extremely potent up close. So Fletcher is already a extremely potent knife fighter due to her good handling and good gun power, and this makes her even better. Now she is a tad slower than the Fletcher, base speed of around 35, with speed flag comes up to 36.8. Turning circle radius is the same as the normal Fletcher, 560, excellent. And A defense is pretty marginal. 103 on the continuous. 86. 207 on the short range, huh? Yeah, it's pretty bad. Fletcher class used to have fairly good AA overall, even stock and without defensive fire, but the AA rework has rendered her a bit less potent in that regard, but we'll make do. Torpedo-wise, the torpedoes are also unique, so they're still 2x5, 533mm like the Fletcher, however, they have a stock range of 13.7km compared to the Fletcher's 10.5 when they're fully upgraded, and the torpedoes are extremely slow, 43 knots. These are, uh, basically the same speed as Midway or Audacious Torpedo Bomber Torpedoes, so... They are extremely slow. However, they do have an extremely high alpha for a Tier 9 Torpedo. 21,600 21, is, uh, basically unrivaled, matched only by the Yugamo and Shimikaze with their Shimi Torps in the 12km configuration. I go to my Yugamo, her use her classmate rather than the Shimikaze just so we can get a comparison. I go to the Shimikaze's 610s. The, the 610s do 23,700. However, she only launches eight of them for salvo. The torpedo detectability is also 1.7 kilometers on the Japanese long lance. And if you compare it to the black torps, which are extremely stealthy, the Black torpedoes have a detectability of 0.9 kilometers, which means they are extremely difficult to spot out. Uh, what this does mean is that if you take torpedo acceleration and bump the speed up to uh, 40, 48 kilometers, you can actually get quite a potent torpedo. However, I don't currently have the points on a captain. To do that, I haven't really worked down the American Destroyer line despite being a long-time player, so I don't have a 19 point captain. Perhaps during the next round of respecs, whenever that happens, I'll pull one of my spare 19 pointers off her and make a black captain. However, if you take torpedo acceleration to pump up these torpedoes, the only other American Destroyer that can really use torpedo acceleration properly is the uh, the gearing with her 16.5s on her 
base hull torpedoes, so do keep that in mind. It's kind of like the Asashio conundrum, where if you make an specialized Asashio captain, unless you're putting torpedo acceleration on your shimmy 20 kilometers, there's really not much use for it. But anyhow, that said, uh, continuing along, the standard 5 five one twenty seven millimeters. they have a reload of 3 seconds. I'm not running reload module, I'm running uh, torpedo reload, but I am running basic fire training. So we have a 3 second reload time, 5.3 second, 180 degree turret traverse is extremely fast. Of course these are American mechanized turrets. And 12.8 base, base firing range is perfectly reasonable. Just going to the captain wise. First off, priority is I have a 13 point captain. I'm going for preventative maintenance into last stand, into survivability expert, into concealment. That's your base 10 points. Then I'm coming back for basics fire training for a little bit of bolstering to my, my AA and my main battery. You could also go for either superintendent for utility for an extra radar charge, extra smoke charge, extra, extra nothing, only extra smoke and extra radar. Or you go for further torpedo to get another 10 seconds off the torpedo reload. The base is 96 seconds, so you shave another 9.6 seconds off, another 10 seconds. So that together with uh, torpedo reload, or bring your torpedo reload down by something around... in the range of 23 to 22 seconds. So 23 and 22 seconds off a 96 second base reload will give you about 70 second reload. Uh, another option is demo expert but I personally don't recommend that under most circumstances. Uh, anyhow, finishing up the build, I'm at 13 points now. So my next two points are definitely going into Adrenaline Rush. Adrenaline Rush is just a universally good skill. Um, I can see an argument for not taking Adrenaline Rush and going into Torpedo Acceleration if that is the build you want to go for. The Black Torpedoes are well worth amplifying, so you could well consider that. You might get more effective damage out of it as compared to Adrenaline Rush if you just go for raw damage. And my last four points will likely go to Radio Location. If I didn't want to go Radio Location, then I'd probably spec into Manual Fire Control for AA. That, or I could go still take Adrenaline Rush and take Torpedo Acceleration and take Jack of All Traits. But I'm leaning towards Radio Location because when you have Radar on a Destroyer, you kind of incentivize to hunt your fellow destroyer classmates because you can just pop smoke and press radar and just gun them down. So, with that said, let's head into battle. First match in the black, so fingers crossed I don't screw this up. I really don't want to redo this introduction. I do all my commentaries live, so... Unless I spe specifically specify that's a replay cast, but yeah. I'm doing this live, so fingers crossed. Matchmaking does not screw me. Get into a nice match, don't get splattered out of existence. I'm running detonation flag to avoid any huge tragedies, but sometimes defo flag is not enough to keep you from killing yourself if you make the wrong decisions, so. We're in the queue, lots of battleships still. Uh, these are kind of leftovers from both the Soviet BB line dropping and the USS Georgia releasing. A lot of battleships crawling around the queue right now. So, hence the battleship heavy matchmaking. Looks like we're not in a carrier match, which is actually pretty spicy. Means we don't have to worry about our weak AA. I'm not client. Show me what we got. So we're on the map Okinawa, not my favorite. Ooh, we're against a super tester in the Mogador. That's kind of scary. Uh, we are top tier, which is excellent. As I mentioned, lots of Georges in the queue right now still, and also Russian battleships. That aside, they have two radar, three radars actually. The Chapai with a 12 kilometer radar, quite potent. Cleveland with a nine kilometer, and Buffalo with a 10 kilometer. Of those three, only the Chapayev can stealth radar. She has a 12 km Russian radar on a. Um, I'm gonna turn off my AA for future battles. Uh, she has a 12 kilometer radar with a 10.4 protection radius. So my team calls AB. I'm gonna so my team calls AB. I'm gonna just take a look at C quickly. And so looking at C on Okinawa, the only pieces of cover are these two islands. I don't really want this Cleveland to come with me because I don't want to smoke him. 
he takes fire, he, I might in fact need to smoke him. I should turn on my radar radius on my minimap. And my detectability by air. I use a fairly translucent minimap. Uh, if you want, you can adjust the transparency a little bit. This usually helps with reading their names. I honestly should probably have it a little higher than I have right now, so. Also turn on last known position if you haven't, and range numerical values, and ship names. All of this extra information really helps. So it's a buffalo here. Switch over to narrow torpedo spread. I've never used this ship before in mind, so. Huh. How do I want to handle this? So my torpedoes are loaded. He's going to go right up to the island. So I reckon... So I'm in radar range now for sure. I reckon if I go right up to the island and he radars me, no one will be able to shoot me. So both radars are here, so I have to survive two radars. Okay, so I'm gonna beach, tactically, of course. I'm gonna reverse around the other side. You can see the buffalo over there. Kind of charging into the cap. He might pop his radar before he dies, maybe not. Cleveland's kind of just holding. Oh, we have a lot of company here. He's within my detection range now too, so I do need to be extremely careful. I don't know why none of them are radaring me. They're just suiciding in. The sims here. Sims has left the cap. I'm not gonna pop smoke unless I absolutely have to. I need to back away. Alright. There's one. Cleveland's still in the cap contesting me. But I don't really care about the Cleveland. And I'm talking about my ally Cleveland now. What's this Sinop doing? He's gonna charge in. He's kind of still there. My, my torpedoes have a 13 kilometer range. He's slowing down. What about the Georgia? Georgia's moving pretty conservatively too. Hydro. I'm gonna move out of the Hydro range. No point torpedoing. I'm in hydro range. He's gonna turn in. He's gonna go for the gap. He can spot these if he wants. I'm after his life. Took some fire there. My teammates die. So you can see the torpedoes of the Hydra, so he tactically beached himself, that is fine. Just need to get out of the 4.4 spotting range of the Hydro. I'm hard spotted anyway because I'm in vision. It's perfectly acceptable. Oh, it's 5 kilometers, huh? Still hard spotted, not hard spotted anymore. Hard spotted now. 5-9, there we go. So we weren't able to do anything for the first five minutes here. It's Cleveland that came with me, as I said. Kind of got himself dispatched. He did attempt. He did manage to trade with the Buffalo who charged in, so that's kind of good. And the Chapaya managed has seems to have dispatched himself. Let's see if I can arc some shots over here. Showing off the American shell arcs. He can't shoot me right now. So I'm just gonna harass him. Aiming with the minimap. Quite a successful, there we go. I was aiming a bit low, looks like. Maybe over there? Nope. He's arcing shells over too. Maybe I'm too high? Nope, I just can't hit him. You can see now that my torpedoes are already reloaded. 
gonna send two salvos in the way of the you know. And then I'm gonna close with the two GDs over there. There's an Akazuki in that smoke, but the problem is the Cleveland. I don't wanna contend with the Cleveland. Well, the um. I don't want to contend with the Akazuki while the Cleveland is up, because the Cleveland can just pop his radar. And then I will, instead of getting an unfair fight, I will get a fair fight. And that's definitely not what I want. So there's one DD right there. And I'm going to pop my smoke and slide into the cap. Slowing down as I touch the cap. See, there's long, lazy arcs. I just want to force him from the cap, don't want to do anything in particular. He's probably torping the smoke, so I can't stay here forever. Took a shell, took some shell fire from the Arago. My team does not appear to be doing that well. So, with that said, time to leave the smoke. There's no reason to stay here, he's not in the cap, so I don't need to contest him. And there are the torps. Can I make this turn? My torpedoes got a hit on the Sinop. As I mentioned, there was definitely a torpedo spread heading for me, and lo and behold, the torpedo spread headed right for me. My torps are up again. This is showing off the short reload. You can get them even shorter if you want to. I can't quite see the angle. It just looks like they're approaching slowly. I'm gonna create as tight of a spread as possible to reclaim this cap. And now what I want to do... My smoke is still ticking here, so you can see the American smoke. I'm gonna shell that stems from smoke. Whoa. Propulsion module. Gonna get me out of the way. So that's the Akazuki, or uh, probably Akazuki Torps, given the high detection ability. Could also be Adago Torps. This guy's kind of being annoying. Why my teammates are not just blasting mode of his existence. So Adago has fairly long reload, so I'm just gonna harass him. My teammates are making this first game kind of irritating and difficult. But I can't do anything about that. So there's a lot of Vostok right over there. Do need to be careful with. The Sims I outgun, I'm up a gun, and I have a faster rate of fire, I believe. So, I'm gonna trade fire with him, the Adago has since left. My torps are up again, but there's nothing for me to launch at. There's a Mogador there, I'm gonna avoid. Reverse out. You can see here I'm having a bit of trouble leading, not that used to the American shells. Alright, well, if the Sims wanted to do that, I'll just shell the door. As I just mentioned, 12.9 km gun range means I can contribute HE fire. The problem now is that we're down points, so we're gonna actually need to kill all. Essentially, the no cap kill all class. Doing what I can. She have done what she could. I'm gonna torp that Sims smoke. Was kind of hoping to hold off on that because I wanted to kind of use these. as a standoff weapon against the Mogador in case he charged over. But you can't always get what you want. Back off the rock here. If 
of a tame first game. So I need to be careful. I have my smoke up again, but the reload booster Mogador means that he can kill me very, very quickly. I don't know what happened to my Don Skoy. He's getting shelled or something. And so as a result, is unable to take the cap. They're contesting this cap, so we're not getting any points. And the northern A cap that they won is still ticking, so... But the Sims, he decided to sit and smoke. Smoke immediately, radar. A little early on the radar, probably. Not getting any hits, but he's fast. I am a black, however, so I can push him away from me for a short while. I'm expecting him to turn back in. So I'm gonna chuck torps at him. He definitely torped my position in the smoke, so I need to be careful. He also has allies beside him. Ooh, those are fast torpedoes. So you can see they're the fast French torpedoes. He's smokeless, but that doesn't mean he can't drive me from the smoke by doing such a thing. My torps are still on cooldown because of the reload. Gonna try and reverse. Gonna get briefly spotted here because I did not reverse this in time. Reverse back into the smoke. Take shots from the Georgia, most likely, and the Mogador. You can see there, he lit me up. But he also lit himself up doing that. Reverse out of the way of the Adago Torps. And this set is wide enough that I can just move forward out of the way. Bit of a desperate running battle here. Gonna be a loss, looks like, but that's fine. Now, if we keep in mind we don't have RPF, we have a torp tube coming up. Mogador showing off his short torpedo reload. Shoot, I'm actually struggling to figure out which way he might have gone. I'm gonna hold both sets. Oh gosh. You can see here the slow torps kind of showing off their inability to hit the target there. You saw the lead time on the Mogador, who's extremely quick beside me. <sighs> kind of getting outside of my knife fighting range. Slow torpedoes kind of showing off some of their disadvantages here. This game we kind of tried, we went to C Cup. We weren't able to secure it immediately, we kind of had to fight a long time for it. We didn't have that much support. We initially only had the three ships. And eventually the Mogador just comes up to me, uh, scruffs me out of the smoke and pushes me out with his superior firepower. At that kind of range I couldn't get my torpedoes into, uh, into the correct bearing. But you saw there the power of the radar kind of pushing him away initially. He definitely outgunned me, he was higher health. And he has superior actual firepower. But with the smoke and radar combo, we were able to push him away from the smoke, albeit only temporarily. But yeah, honestly I'm not too unhappy with that performance. 40,000 damage is a bit low, obviously, but... I can't get everything. 3 torpedo hits. Two floods, one actual kill, four in caps, 83 shell hits, three defender ribbons, one capture. Team score wise, we are close to the top. The bottom tier Chiretsuyu probably inflicted some damage, so was able to kind of show off his stuff. Enemy team did decently. If you go to the detailed report, a good mix of gun and torpedo damage. I'm still familiarizing myself with this line of ships, so I'm not the most experienced on the American duties. So you'll have to excuse me. My captain is also not exactly fully optimized, but all in all, fairly reasonable first game. I'm not too unhappy. And yeah, there you have it, USS Black. And well, once I familiarize myself with this Fletcher, look forward to seeing more from me with her. Enjoy.